Okay, good morning everybody and welcome to the Friday morning warm-up and uh, I think they're probably warm enough already but we'll still warm our instruments up if not ourselves. Um, okay, we're looking at the um, diminished scale today and uh, the, also the DIM7 chord which uh, comes from it. Um, but of course, first of all, we need to just do a wee bit of clapping. So I'm just going to put onto the screen our screen. Uh, da, 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 da. There it is, clapping pattern. Um, it's a, a cascara pattern. Now, cascara is um, the shell of a drum. Uh, in um, usually in Latin music, uh, they might tap the side of it with a stick, uh, just bang out a rhythm. And that top rhythm is um, a traditional one. Um, it it does appear in Cuban music traditionally, but these sort of rhythms find their ways into um, all music um, just through uh, sort of musical osmosis, I suppose you might say. But I've shown it in context with a what's called a rumba clave underneath, which is a, a two bar fixed pattern and the two lock together. Now, I'm not going to we're not going to worry about the rumba clave uh, pattern at the bottom. We're just going to clap the top one. Um, so let me just get the metronome going. So if you're ready to join in, we'll just do that for a minute. After four, one, two, one, two, three, four. Last time. There we go. Whilst we were clapping there, I was trying to work out the rhythmic pattern structure. It's almost like, I think it's a sort of a three beat phrase. which goes in and out of step with the four beats of the bar. But uh, anyway, uh, infectious little rhythm. Good. If you'd like to get hold of your instruments, and uh, the next thing we'll do is uh, just uh, play a single tone. Um, D diminished is the scale, so D, concert D is the, the note of choice. And um, if you'd like to just play a D for a little while, or maybe a, a harmony note, uh, an F sharp, or a, uh, oh, interesting, I can hear somebody. <laughs> uh, sorry, just let me find our mute button. Do, 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 do. Mute. Oh. Okay, so, um, so that will be E for the B flat instruments and a B for the alto instruments. Here we go, just for a minute. One, two, three, four.
One, two, three, four. Good, okay. Now, um, let's play the chromatic scale, as always, in the, the best tradition of the Friday morning warm-up. So we're going to be playing, starting on concert D, um, so E or B for the oh, B flats and A flat, E flats. Starting on concert D, um, up an octave and down again. So no different to what we've been doing for the last few weeks. So here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Let's do that again. Um, so aim for consistency in tone, volume, and uh, unless you've decided in your head you're going to make it go loud to the top and then go back quiet to the bottom, or giving you giving it some other dynamic. Um, and guitarists, this is something I'm telling myself at the same time as uh, you guys. Um, see if you can keep your fingers as close to the fretboard as possible, not let them sort of twang up in the air. So you're only just going above a couple of millimeters above the string after you release it. So keep the fingers close to the strings. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's hard to stop that little finger going up in the air, but still. <laughs> Uh, let's move on tempo wise up to uh, that was 80 so up to 100 beats per minute after four one two one two three four Just another tip for guitarists while I think about it, and ukulele players. Uh, when you hold a string down, don't hold it down too much. It, it, you might find yourself clamping your finger down just to make sure that note comes out. It really only needs a relatively light touch. And there's a double benefit here because not only does it require less effort to put the finger down, uh, it requires less effort to release it because releasing a muscle requires as much energy as forcing a muscle to uh, act. So um, if it's on lightly, it will come off lightly as well, and that will help speed up uh, and your, your playing and agility generally. Let's move on uh, to 130. We'll do a couple more. One, two, one, two, three, four. One more, nice quick one to finish with. Um, 170, one, two, one, two, three, four. There we have it, the chromatic scale. Okie dokie. Uh, let's look at this uh, thing called the diminished scale. Just a little bit of theory. Some of you like it, some of you. You're yeah, not so bothered, but uh, um, always helpful um, if you do understand a little bit of the theory. Just remember, though, that theory is not the rules of music. It's only somebody trying to explain why music sounds the way it does. So, uh, OK, I'm just going to um, quickly describe where the diminished scale comes from. And uh, if I can find the, the button. Oh, here we go. Use a bit of the technology. Yeah, okay. Um, it's a scale, of course, uh, and it has a, a pattern which is um, to go up in steps of a whole tone, a half tone, a whole tone, a half tone, a whole tone, a half tone, a whole tone, a half tone. So it's a, an odd little scale. It's not a natural one, it's just got a man made one. Uh, which means that if the first note is D, and we're talking about the D diminished scale here for concert instruments, and you go up a whole tone, you'll go to E. And if you go up a half tone, that's the next step, you go up an F, a whole tone, G, a 
half tone G sharp and another whole tone A sharp and a half tone B and a whole tone C sharp and then the next one will be D again so you'll see by using that formula every scale has a formula of whole tones and half tones um, you'll see that there are actually eight notes in it which makes it a bit of a rare beast it's an octatonic scale eight notes whereas most scales are seven notes uh, heptatonic and of course you also get pentatonics but uh, this is an eight note scale okay well that's the scale um, the whole tone half tone diminished scale there is a half tone whole tone one which is kind of reversed but we're not looking at that today uh, also what is the the chord the seventh chord which comes out of it well like all chords it's the first the third the fifth and the seventh so let's just write these up you'll see these in notation in a minute anyway but so the root note is D so it's and then the third will be F and the fifth will be a G sharp and the seventh will be a B so that's your diminished seventh chord derived from the diminished scale uh, for the B flat instruments that will be E G A sharp you're going to practice these in a minute anyway but uh, C sharp this is the dim 7 chord and then finally for the the alto hey, that's the seventh is a b what's the c sharp the eighth it's an eight note scale <laughs> does that answer your question it takes some getting used to doesn't it yeah yeah it does yes it's an eight note that's right it's um it's an odd one uh and for altos um uh, yes, that would be B, uh, then it would be D, and then it would be F, and then it would be A flat. No, uh, is that right? Yes. Uh, da, 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 da. That's right, yeah. Okay, um, that's an interesting thing. I've just realised that the arpeggio for the um, alto players is the same as it is for the concert players, just an in inversion. Same four notes. Anyway, that's a little thing I've discovered. I didn't realise that. Um, so that's, anyway, they're the three uh, arpeggios for the concert B flat and E flat instruments. Um, yes, it is an eight note scale. It does make things a little bit different. It's managed to squeeze eight notes into an octave rather than seven, but uh, there we go. Anyway, we'll see a little bit more about how this all works in a sec. So that's the, the basics of the, the theory. Now I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, you can always come back to this video if you want to. Um, and it always does that when I get rid of the whiteboard it gets rid of the uh, thing as well so let's move on to the sheets now so we're actually going to play those that scale and arpeggio now so you'll you'll see it from a, a another a musical angle right we're going to play that top line the whole line this is the diminished scale going up and down And I'm just for, as it is a little bit unusual, there's quite a lot of accidentals in there as well. I'm just going to play it a little bit more slowly. So we're going to do it. Yeah, because it's also unusual. Your ear doesn't make you want to go to the next note quite so naturally as it does with major scales. So let's play the top line, the diminished scale ascending and descending. One, two, one, two, three, four. So I've left off the, the first note because I couldn't fit it in. But uh, when you get to the end of that line, just plonk on the end the, the original root note. Okay, let's do that again. One, two, one, two, three, four. time two three four 
And as I mentioned last time, if, if you want to hear a clear example of that scale being played from one end to the other in a rec on a record, uh, listen to the opening to Just by Radiohead. But it is used in melodic, um, uh, as a you know, in melodic um, as a melodic function in all sorts of music, classical, jazz, and all, and folk music, and so on. So it's but it's kind of usually a bit more hidden in the melody, shorter extracts. Now uh, I did show you the um, first, third, fifth, and seventh. So that will be the the basic dimin diminished seventh uh, chord. Uh, a minute ago so we're now going to play that so we're going to now do we're on the second line now and this is the um the d f uh, a sharp b arpeggio so if you'd like to play that we're going to play the first two bars of the second line so this is the, the basic diminished seventh arpeggio up and down one two one two three four Again, the root note's missing, so just stick it on the end. And again, one, two, three, four. One more time, two, three, four. does have the sound of impending doom doesn't it right let's just play the inversion of that now so that basically means starting on the second note not the first and then going up an octave and coming back down so it's just the same four notes but starting on the the, the third the second note <laughs> but the third in the series so we're now on the next two bars of the second line one two one two three Four. One more time, two, three, four. Oh, sorry, and now one more time, two, three, four. Okay, so that's starting on the third of that chord. Now we're going to start on the fifth, so onto the next line. Okay, it's going to sound the same because they're all the same notes, just inverted. Um, what you may have noticed, and I'll point out, is that the difference between each adjacent note is a minor third. So the whole chord, D, B, um, sorry, D, F. Get that right D F A flat B they're all minor thirds apart and that's one of the reasons why it has this certain sort of sound uh, but also has a bit of an artificial sound as well so on the third line now first two bars one two one two three four <laughs> Okay, let's move on to the last inversion now, starting on the seventh. And guitarists, you need to move, your, if you're following the tab, move your finger up to the fourth fret, first finger on the fourth fret to get in position for this one. So after four, one, two, three, four. One more 
time. One, two, three, four. Okay, uh, the, the sound of these chords, if played as a, a, a chord on a piano or guitar or a ukulele, I think I'll put the, the actual tab on the um, email, is that sort of sound. And there are four notes in there, as I've said, and they re that chord will resolve to any one of four chords, providing that chord is rooted one semitone above the, the note in that um, chord. Quick little bit of theory, I'll see if I can do this quickly, because uh, it is interesting. <laughs> I say it's interesting, I think it is. Um, right, you can just sit back and listen for a couple of minutes. Let me just clear that. Now, uh, this diminished chord resolves to another chord, is what I just said. One we, one we do know, G7 resolves to C, yeah. Yeah, the standard plagal, uh, perfect cadence, G to C. And the reason for that is because in G, the notes are G, B, D and F. B to F, this is the important bit, the third and the seventh are a tritone apart. Okay, that's three tones, tritone. And the tritone is the reason why a chord wants to go somewhere else, because it's a very unstable sound. If you hear a tritone, sounds horrible, sounds like that, but it wants to resolve to that. And that's, it. that's where the internal notes of the chord make it want to resolve. Uh, so the BF, the two notes B and F, the B resolves up to a C and the F resolves down to an E, semitones apart. And that gives us the basis of the C, E, G notes of a C chord. So there's something you might not have known. But anyway, that's um, why uh, G7 resolves to a C. It's because that internal tritone of B and F. And they want to shift either way a semitone b up to c f down to e okay now what have we got in the d diminished chord we've got a d got an f got an a flat and we've got a b so we've got in there the f and the b so that means that there is an in, there is an internal tritone in that diminished chord so that chord will resolve to c as well it's got that same magnetic pull, the F and the B there, there and there. However, there's also a D and A flat, and they happen to be a tritone apart. And if D res resolves up to the E flat, and the A flat resolves down to the G, that is an E flat major chord. So that D dim. 7 chord also resolves to an E flat major. Just stick with it for a little while. <laughs> because as well as F and B, D and A flat, B and, well, B and F rather, F and B is another tritone. I know it's the other two. It's, it's um, let's go back a bit. I'm running out of space here. Clear. Sorry, I'm not going to go on for much longer this explanation. I'm just uh, <laughs> finishing off. There is also as well as, um, what did I say, B and F, there is also F and B. F resolves up to F sharp. B resolves down to A sharp. That's an F sharp major chord. Okay, we're getting into more esoteric chords here. But uh, the nub of it is that there are four different chords that a D dim seven will resolve to. And I'll let you work the rest out on a bit of paper. How about that? <laughs> Um, anyway, I don't want to spend too long on this because we're here to do some warming up. But um, So there are four chords that the D-Dim7 chord will uh, resolve to. And they all happen to be a semitone above one of the notes in that chord. 
there's a B in the uh, D dim 7, so it, dim 7 will resolve to C. Okay, that's enough of the little theory thing, but uh, I hope you found that interesting or wanted to explore it further. Let's move on to now exercise pattern number one, which is two lines, so eight bars. It's just a little pattern using the notes in the diminished scale, not the uh, dim 7 chord, but the scale which uh, it derives from. So I'm just going to play the next uh, exercise pattern number one, both lines. Okay, here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. So it's kind of working its way up the scale in little three note chunks. Do that again. After four. One, two, three, four. One more time. Reminds me of plugging baby, David. Oh yes, that's probably based on the diminished scale. Yeah. Two, three, four. Except they play it about three times quicker, but yes. <laughs> uh, if anyone wants to go and check that out, there's a tune by Muse called Plugin Baby, and it does have some very diminished sounding runs in it. Um, I expect there are all sorts of different uh, places you can hear these um, this scale in action. Uh, I might do a bit of listening afterwards. Right, and finally, just um, a little bit of a, oh, definitely a little bit of a trickier pattern on the bottom now, just to. Uh, I'm going to slow it down slightly on the metronome there. Let's just play that bottom line. We're just going to do it twice. I've got more chance of getting them all right that way. <laughs> Last line, here we go. Quavers, don't forget. After four. One, two, three, four. time. One, two, three, four. Good. Yes, if anyone does uh, come up with some examples of uh, clearly a diminished scale in operation, it does tend to be used in these sort of patterns um, rather than those melodies so much it does tend to get used of these kind of patterns you can imagine Bart going <laughs> down a little um, a uh, diminished scale but uh, okay there's um, that's a, a little bit on the diminished scale there we're now going to finish off this uh, morning with the usual uh, me playing some chords a little bit of strumming let's just get that on the screen and um, a little chord sequence here taken from a Gershwin song called uh, It's Wonderful or Swonderful, apostrophe S, Wonderful. And these are the chords to the um, kind of main chorus. 
and um, you'll see in there there's two bars of a dim seven chord uh, so if you'd like to play that that's uh, on the guitar that's naught one naught one and on the ukulele I've forgotten what it is because I haven't got one in front of me but hopefully uh, you'll, you'll have it written down in front of you somewhere so I'm just going to play those chords and uh, if you wanted to try the diminished scale over the third and fourth bars just play some notes from it or a little pattern uh, that would be great and that will give you a chance to put it into action okay here we go I'm just going to strum these fairly sort of in a straight fashion one two one two three four played that in the key of D flat concert D flat in order to get that diminished chord in but uh, there we go right okay everybody uh, thanks for coming along and um, we'll be doing something completely different next week uh, we'll come back to this in probably six or seven weeks time the diminished ones so if there's anything you didn't quite pick up uh, I'll no doubt repeat it <laughs> uh,